Hello and welcome to Kicking Tires. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Justin. And it is July 21st today and we got some exciting Volkswagen news because they're <laughs> killing off the Passat. <laughs> is the excitement the death of the Passat or is it in the, 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 the limited edition Passat that's coming out? All right. So my family had a Volkswagen Passat back in 95. I loved that Passat. 2.8 yeah. liter VR6. It was it was the top of its game. Although car and driver, I think, had it placed like seventh or eighth, something <laughs> like in a comparison contest. Yeah. I love that car. Yeah, uh, my family, uh, I'm like five years younger than you, and my family had a Passat in 2000. The 1.8T <laughs> manual. Uh, yeah, that, that one was good because that it's one pretty quick. The the engine was actually mounted um, longitudinal, it wasn't a transverse uh, yeah, mount, which is doesn't even make sense really. <laughs> like why? <laughs> What's the benefit of making it, it more front heavy than it? Even, it's <laughs> making it longer than it needs to be. Because that gen, it was based on the A4, yeah, and the they used the same A4 transaxle so it was to to make that all-wheel drive system work they made it longitudinal um so it was super different but it's the death of the passat because uh we're not going to be able to see the passat live on past 2021 so this is uh oh no sorry volkswagen will end production of the u.s passat for the 2022 model year so one more year of the passat but let's be honest this one is like the the most plain Passat you've ever seen. Like you, you take a picture of like, you know, you tell someone to say, Hey, draw me a car. It's the Passat. Like it's that boring. It's just no man's car. Yeah. And I mean, you can tell like they, they didn't really give a crap about this model. I feel like, like I'm looking at a 2012 Passat interior and it's very similar. So the one 10 years ago, basically has the same hard points as this one yeah and just the overall styling everything is very similar like they the jetta they change it up quite a bit uh with the current generation Still for so better boring. or for worse i'm not a big fan of it but at least they did something with it with the passat i feel like they just phoned it in and for the last five years it hasn't really been a compelling product it, even in in a dying segment in an already dying segment they just already you know you could have made a little bit more competitive i feel like yeah the, honestly there's really not much of an effort that's into this vehicle but for the last year they are making four kind of limited editions um and it's actually well there's only so many of them that they're uh, gonna generate there's four different colors. There's a red, a green, white, and a gray. And each individual one has different like units that they're producing to, you know, have like different things. So like for the platinum gray, it's they're making 615 of them because there's six generations of the imported Passat, one <laughs> assembled. Like, come on. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just like, you know, they're, they're trying really hard here. Honestly, I don't think it's going to sell well. It has never sold well. That's where they're killing it off. Um, so more like good riddance at this point than anything else. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures of this new limited edition. It's like, okay, yes, you get some nice leather, some nice wood here. But the steering wheel looks the same as my 2015 Passat or no, uh, Touareg. And and the, the gauge cluster is like ancient. Like that's yeah. from 10 years ago. This is... The Passat is the car that you get at a rental company when you say, I want a large vehicle because the Taurus is no longer available and you can't get a Crown Vic. They'll give you a Passat as a large vehicle. That's what the Passat is for. But it's like, it's just Camry or cord size. No, it's bigger than that. Is it really? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the Passat is absolutely huge. Like the interior volume of it. It's huge. It doesn't seem Avalon big. I don't know. No, it's big. It's big. Um, friend had a this current gen, but the first year that it came out, Passat sat in the back seat. I thought it was a limo. Like it's it's enormous the size of this thing. Hmm. Like all Volkswagens are huge. Like the uh, the Atlas, that's huge. Mm, yeah, they they 
they really go for that interior volume not not so much interior quality or <laughs> no anything like it's like or or, or tech no. but uh and you know what it's it's weird because they know how to do it right you look at the mark 8 and that feels like modern and like futuristic or even the the tiguan those are the volume sellers they they kind of care about they they try a little harder there and then on yeah. this, it's, it's like volkswagen they have this much money and you know they lost a lot of money during you know something that happened not that long ago something about them lying you know you may have heard of it mm. um but because of that they don't have that much money and they're like hey we only have like 50 bucks to spend on the passat um since it's dying anyways why why bother <laughs> that's basically what it looks like yeah no and it's funny because the whole limited edition thing it revolves around the chattanooga plant which i don't think it's a plant in tennessee that volkswagen has that's gonna be retooled and it's just gonna be uh electric vehicles going forward so this is kind of the last one uh non-electric car that's gonna be made from there but i don't think that that plant means anything to anyone who doesn't work there (laughs) <laughs> right like it's not like you know they're there it's like bowling green is is very significant uh for gm and you know there's there's parts of detroit where okay there is something special there or even uh T- toyota in in texas um but chattanooga and and volkswagen like we volkswagen north america has outsourced just about as much as they can to mexico and so <laughs> I don't know. I I really don't know what 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 the uh, appeal they think of this Tennessee edition <laughs> uh, Passat is gonna be. Like, if you don't already work or live there, like, <laughs> you're probably not gonna care. Yeah, you really won't. Yeah, that's that's enough talk about Passat. I I'm done. Let's uh move over to Porsche, another Volkswagen Audi group here. Um, they updated the Macan. So for 2022, they made it, in their words, stronger, sharper, sportier. Um, well, it definitely does look better. I, I, my, I'm kind of conflicted. I feel like they already updated this rear end. They, they did update the rear end, but now they really updated the front end. That's that's where the the majority of it is, and you can really see it within the GTS model. So the the press materials they have a, a red GTS that's the new 2022 update, and the entire grill is blacked out. Yeah, it's and it's the, the same shape underneath. Like it's not <laughs> significantly different. They've just taken a black highlighter and just <laughs> gone over it they just i don't think it. it looks bad don't don't get me wrong but it's uh it's not that big of a update on the outside um the rear diffuser has been updated a little oh, bit it looks there as good. well yeah the close up of that diffuser it's got like this uh diamond pattern to it it looks pretty good um yeah. The wing looks good. GTS, I think this is the first GTS, right? For Macan. No, they have the GTS currently. Oh, okay. Um, so you, you still have the GTS, but they're actually dropping the top trim, the turbo trim. Mm. So the turbo trim is no more. You can get the GTS, but the GTS use the GTS uses the old turbo motor. Okay. So technically. You can get the new GTS, but it's a turbo of the old one, and it's cheaper than the old one. But it doesn't say turbo on the back. But it does have a turbo under under the hood. Was that confusing? (laughs) Well, and and we know why uh, Porsche is doing this, is they don't want to go... I don't think we will see them go too crazy with the Macan. The Macan is, is a great chassis. It's a good size. It's light. Um, but they just spent a lot of money and R and D on that turbo GT, the, the Cayenne. Cayenne. Yeah. Yeah. And that is now their, the, that's their bread and butter, right? If you want a fast SUV, you know, people shopping for a Macan, they, they have money for many. They're not really like budget conscious, I find, No. but, um, you know, that's, that's the Cayman complex now transfer to their 
their SUVs, where the the this is the baby SUV. It's not going to get that crazy. It, you know, it has the potential. You can put a a crazy engine in it and put big fender flares and and wide tires on it, give it aero upgrades, and this could have the SUV world record around the Nurburgring, but they've reserved that for the top of the line, their yeah. flagship SUV. Um, so I think the GTS, that's about as good as we're going to get with the Macan. Yeah, so I was reading a bunch of like media sites and like different things. Um, they're asking if a turbo version is going to come, but right now Porsche is saying potentially no but it's not saying yes for sure. So it's hard to say if they will bring in an actual turbo trim to -hmm. make a hotter version of the Macan. Uh, But the GTS is going to be the best one you can buy for 2022, at least for now. Yeah. Um, What I like about it is like the Macan, you can get it in like kind of three different engines, right? Uh, The base two liter turbo, it makes good power, 261 horsepower. You know, a vehicle like this, it's it's good enough. But, you know, once you step up to S, then you get the 2.9 liter twin turbo six. Now, of course, the GTS is just another iteration of that. But up to 434 horsepower, like that's a lot in a small little compact SUV. Yeah, emphasis on the compact, because, I mean, this competes with uh, Audi SQ5, technically, and mm-hmm. the BMW X3M. But the Those SQ5 are much is the roomier cars. SQ5 is the exact same as this. It is, but somehow <laughs> when you get into this, this feels like a Q3 inside. It does size-wise. feel smaller. It does feel um, smaller. It doesn't feel as... It's definitely not as spacious as uh, the X3 or the Q3. Um, that's kind of where I lean towards, because the X3M, just to me, is is so wild. And you get, what, close to 600 horsepower yeah. on the X3M? And I don't know. The Macan used to be my favorite in this segment. I even considered getting one at one point. But then I just felt like it was such a jack of all trades. And I think it still is. It's just not like practical enough as far as a, a, a you know small midsize SUV goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to be too precious with it. And just things like that that I'm just like, I don't know if I want to deal with it at the end of the day. It's not great on fuel and it's not that fast it's it's fast but it's not that fast that it's going to replace uh an actual sports car i feel like Mm -hmm. so the biggest update for 2022 um is the interior so gone is the physical buttons now you get these haptic buttons which uh, i don't know about you but i'm not a big fan of like i like feeling of buttons i can feel buttons like okay three down from that it's exactly the button I need. I can click on that without looking. With haptic buttons, you, there's no feel. You know, by muscle memory, you may not be able to exactly place your finger exactly where you should for whatever that you need. So it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, they also updated the steering wheel. It's the same one that you, they use on the 911. It's, you know, it's, it's a nice interior, but I think they kind of simplified it a little bit to make it, nicer in a way but yeah the usability find factor something odd about this interior is the carbon they've used on that steering wheel and, and it's on the door sill as well it's kind of tacky the carbon mm-hmm. does not look real it doesn't like the weave on it is is strange um yeah it feels a little bit yeah it feels a little bit amazon to me yeah kind of <laughs> like walmart uh, or Amazon or Amazon or AutoZone kind of carbon trim. It, yeah, like if you look at what they put it. on Audi, like like a Audi, I don't know RS6 or whatever. Um, the carbon on that looks a lot more legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this looks decorative at best. Um, kind of is decorative, I guess, at this point. <laughs> oh well, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, it doesn't look uh, genuine enough, right? For me. Um, but yeah, I'm the, the haptic buttons. I don't mind it functionally so much, um, because you do get hard buttons to change your climate control, your volume and your, I guess there's a little display knob that you get still. 
Right. Um, so it, it's buttons that you don't use that often now, but the problem is the the fingerprints mm. is going to be an issue because it's on like a, it's probably like Gorilla Glass or something. It maybe doesn't scratch so easily, but it's still going to show fingerprints. Yeah, it's like going no to be, it's gonna be kind of messy and dirty over time. Yeah, and I mean, Porsche had that really cool first generation McCann center console with with the with, with the, the gazillion with buttons. The row of buttons it's the same <laughs> amount of buttons but it just visually it was like oh this is a this is a fighter fighter yeah. jet <laughs> it's like um, yeah yeah but you know it's 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 a needed facelift but it's only a facelift whereas the competitors have been redesigned and like i said the x3m makes over 500 horsepower with basically the new uh, M3 motor, so easily tunable to 600 plus if you wanted to. So that's my pick in this class still. Or if you want something with a little bit more passion, a little bit more soul, there's the <laughs> Alfa <say> Romeo. <laughs> no. <laughs> really mm. like the Stelvio because it's so unique, but it's not a car that you would actually buy because it's a good car. You would buy it because you want something unique that, you know, probably sits at the Alpha dealership because it's getting worked on. Yeah. And it's <laughs> one of those double-edged swords where if it was a good car, more people would buy it. But if more people bought it, you don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, if you saw it everywhere, you wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that you may want, but you can't get uh, the Audi RS3. So the RS3 in rest of the world, well, maybe not the entire world, but um, you can get a sedan and a hatch. But here in North America, we apparently don't like hatchbacks um, somehow. So we are not getting the RS3 in a hatch, mm -hmm. but only the sedan. Yeah, because our, our Jetta RR sells so well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, they don't... Honestly, whoever says that we don't like hatchbacks, like, they're... they're I've always said that... It's always rhetoric in terms of car journalists and, and magazines to say, oh, people don't like hatchbacks here. But, like, look at the Golf R yeah. versus the... the look R. at the Golf R versus the S3 or RS3, right? Like, it's... There's a reason why Volkswagen pushes that car and doesn't push the Jetta GLI to an R or anything like that because no one wants the Jetta. Well, I uh, mean, there's there's a lot more than the, the Jetta versus Golf story here. No one really wants the Jetta right now. It's pretty bad. I think after Mark V, no one really wanted the Jetta. Yeah, when it comes to like enthusiast cars, I think... I don't think the hatchback is an issue. I think, I don't know why they don't bring these here. I think it might just be like parts. Um, I get it with the, the standard A3. Again, um, the, the the original A3 hatchback sold reasonably well, I want to say. Mm -hmm. The one that was basically the, a GTI. The e-tron the, uh, the e one that we got here? Or... Before that, even like an oh six, yeah, yeah, the older, yeah, one. like those are those are reasonably popular, I think, um, and it just kind of differentiates it from the rest of your product lineup. I feel like had they gone hatch only with the three, then your A fours and the A five Sportbacks and the A, you know, it just gives you less uh, cannibalization. I want to say mm -hmm. because you get into you get into an A4 after getting like the current one, like a 2021 A4 versus an A3. And the A4 is a lot nicer inside. Mm -hmm. It just feels more premium. And it has been that way for a while now. But if you if one is a hatchback and one is a sedan, you don't have that comparison so much. Um, and you can I feel like you can get away with having the three being inferior to the four. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of been my dilemma. I don't think as a sedan, it's good enough to be a sedan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the RS3 is still going to be powered by a two and a half liter five cylinder, makes 401 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. Um, so 
those numbers, they're not a lot more than the previous generation. Mm -hmm. uh, but what Audi is saying is uh, that power is a lot more immediate and it's available yeah. much longer of the rent, uh, like the duration of the rev range. Yeah, so you get it's more power. Gains. Yeah. Yeah. So you get you get more power more of the time, which mm -hmm. should make this faster overall. Um, of course, you still get a seven speed dual clutch, uh, the good DSG, and of course the Quattro all wheel drive. But this has a new drift mode, very similar to like the S3 as well as the Golf R. Um, it's just a clutch pack on the back, so it's able to send more power to one side than the other. Mm -hmm. Really unique system. It's going to be quite entertaining to drive, I'm sure. Um, yeah. But I, don't I hope know. the green color makes it. Oh, like it's, green... it's quite wild. Um, it, it's kind of like the Golf R for the, the 7th gen, or even well, GTI had the Viper green, I think it was called. No one really got those custom colors on the on the Golfs, I, th I think, but. Um, the, the RS models always got like the RS Q3 had this color. Right, right. Uh, that was kind of the big deal. I feel uh, like a lot of people, when they choose colors, they want to play it safe, though. They think about resell, right? And then yeah. they think about, oh, what, what is, you know, which color will sell well later on? And a lot of people just get like white, black, silver kind of thing. It's always every RS3 is white, black, or silver. Yeah. Um, they do come in, I think they come in red the current ones but uh i mean if you're leasing it which i know a lot of people are in this price range uh it's honestly not a bad idea and then you can just lease whatever color you want let the dealership deal with do they, it. they won't give you a lower residual for choosing a green car <laughs> it's like so, oh it's green oh. you might as well that's a free that's a bonus for you yeah i i, I feel like uh, they may not. They may be reluctant to order you that lease because they got to deal with it <laughs> afterwards. But you know, I think any okay. If you're buying this car five years after, you're you're out looking for something unique. You're not looking for, you know, your A to B commuter car. It doesn't need to be that conservative of a color. Yeah. And you're already taking a risk buying a five year old German five cylinder car. <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> I, I feel like it, maybe it doesn't matter so much uh, I do like what they've done with the front end it looks a lot like the RSQ8 um, just gives it a more macho look yeah it actually reminds me of the e-tron GT a yes. little bit yes definitely um, and I really like the headlights so there's optional matrix LED headlights um, and on the driver's side Right underneath the headlight, there's like a, a little matrix layout that shows you a flag, and then it goes to R S three when you start it up. Like no one ever is gonna see that. Like other than if you told someone and be like, "Hey, yo, check out my headlights when I start my car." Like literally, no one's ever gonna see that. But Audi's headlight game, it's just always been so good. Yeah. Like, like when you walk up to the car, you unlock the car. Does that dance? Like mm -hmm. they fills in the uh, little yeah. Uh, looks like a water filling effect. Yeah, it just yeah. looks amazing. And as you walk away, you lock the car, and it just kind of disappears. Like it's such a cool effect. I love those lights. I'm a big light guy, um, and you know Audi has always sold me on their lights, especially when back in like what. 2000 when they came up with uh um the under the headlight oh yeah, the light. eyebrow yeah. yeah and then everyone had the it jewel jewel eye led and then everyone <laughs> everyone with a mark IV jetta got the aftermarket one that looks like the, <laughs> to make it look like an a4 yeah. yeah it was super common but it that was you know, like the, r8 oh, first gen r8 yeah, yeah. Audi, Audi just does good headlights. Let's be honest here. Good headlights and good taillights too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so yeah, subtle touches. I like what they've done with the fender. That little, little pocket on the fender. Mm, um, on the front fender. On the front fender, yeah. It's it's a very subtle, but it's quite like large vertically. Um, kind of reminds me of like the STI or uh, just a cleaner version of what's on the Type R. Um, yeah, you the RS3 is quite distinguished. 
you don't really see that vent like looking at it the from front, the front three quarter. No. Yeah, it's it's yeah. smooth there. That's, that's only from the back end. That's Audi with their wide bodies. Like if you look yeah. at the RS5 Sportback, yeah. it's actually like two inches wider than a normal one, but you never know. It's super subtle. It's very subtle, but then when you do see it, you're like, oh damn. Oh, something's like a little it's different. It's actually there. different, and it's 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 quite nice. Um, the RS six looks wide. <laughs> oh yeah, sure the, when you see that in yeah, person, yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, clean. Like they just, <laughs> yeah. It's it's the opposite of what Honda did with the Type R, <laughs> which is to slap on a, a wide fender flare kit that doesn't look like it was even made for that car. Out. Audi, they know their audience, right? You know, yeah. if you're buying an Audi, you're not some 20-year-old kid, you know, buying a Civic Type R. That's not who's buying Audis here. You know, these people are a little bit more mature. They may have a family. They don't need something that screams performance with a big mm. wing on the back. I mean, check out that little lip spoiler on the back of the RS3. It's subtle, and but that's all it needs. It's it's yeah. a perfectly well packaged for someone that's maybe a little bit more mature, a little bit older. Yeah, and they've got to compete with Mercedes from this. Nothing really from BMW. I mean, what do you M2 mean? Two maybe the, the but BMW makes the, an amazing two series, the two two forty i or two thirty five. Yeah, Grand the, Coupe. <laughs> yeah like the four-door sedan version of a mini <laughs> yeah bmw doesn't really have a genuine competitor but the mercedes is is pretty hot in this segment yeah um but no this is a nice one and uh available dynamic package i don't know if we talked about it yet we don't really know what's exactly in that package uh, but based on the previous generation we're getting fixed suspension on that one so non-adjustable i guess so not the uh adaptive magnetic ride stuff uh ceramic brakes which is huge because the regular brakes they look they look the part but they don't work that well uh at least on the regular rs3 i feel like and they're still just as expensive to replace um so yeah the that one is going to get a top speed of a ridiculous top speed of like what 280 290 something like two, that two where was that 290 290 yeah kilometers an hour in an rs3 and, and that's from the factory right so that's um that's pretty impressive i think yeah 290 is not something that anyone will go near here in you north should. america um autobahn sure but I mean, even on tracks with the longest straights, I mean, you, you can't get up there. <laughs> 290, <laughs> that straight has to be like Fast and Furious long to get to 290. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the RS3's thing has always been drag racing and just highway pulls, killing supercars with a very slight tuning of the engine. And you can you can destroy most supercars because of the, the Quattro, the DSG, and just all the technology behind this car. And this one, it's a subtle upgrade from the last one, but it's a much needed one. The interior just feels update like modern again. Yeah. Again, the old one felt like like what the Passat did, <laughs> which is it, it looked ten years old. The <laughs> from day one it looked it looked old. And because uh, we got the RS three pretty late here, like twenty yeah. Seventeen or something like that, uh, and at that point, that interior was not up to par for a seventy thousand dollar car. Right. Um, but this one, decent. Yeah, yeah. definitely decent. Mm. Speaking of decent, um, Chevrolet released a, a little bit of a video. It's the twenty twenty three Corvette Z O six. So mm. no information other than like a track of audio and a little bit of video. Yeah. I'm gonna, I don't know if our audience can hear that. I, I don't know, but I'm going to play it. I don't think so, because our mics don't pick up uh, your computer audio. I'm going to um, make sure that, you know what? Oh, you know what I can do? Change the audio output. I'm recording from here. I can share computer sound. Yeah. So while it. Jimmy's doing that, I will uh, talk a little bit about what's speculated for the Z06. Oh, there we go. 
Sounds like a Ferrari. Yeah. Actually, sounds like Ferrari in its golden years, I should say. Because today's Ferraris don't really sound this good. So, that's all they've given us. Um, but we're pretty sure it's a flat plane V8. Yeah, flat plane crank V8, uh, according to most of the speculation. And the reason they know that is it's based off of the C8R race car. Um, the C8, obviously Corvette, very embedded into racing uh, in North America and globally, actually. Uh, I think the C8R is way nicer than the normal C8. I don't like the Stingray look. Um, but the C8R just has like a, a wider stance to it that just proportionally, I think, looks a lot better. Uh, and so we're, we're going to see that basically that carried over to a lesser extent onto the Z06. But the Z06, you know, with the C7 generation, again, wider, more aggressive arrow than the standard uh, Stingray. So that's kind of where, you know, the rendering that I have this week as my background, that is just a rendering. But we have pretty good, pretty good uh, stuff to base uh, these rumors on. And we've seen uh, numerous spy cars or test, test mules, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, this, this is the one to wait for because the Z06 is going to be priced if it was like before in probably the high 90s low hundred thousand dollar range to start and for what that's worth i think you know being an actual supercar to your supercar you know we're not talking we're talking close if not more than 600 horsepower and if it does get this flat plane crank, it's going to be close to 9,000 RPM readily. Like, that is a genuine supercar. Mm -hmm. The regular C8 is kind of just, like, pedestrian. A lot of people were crazy about it when it launched, and I think a lot of people still are crazy about the, the C8. But to me, uh, both visually and performance-wise, I think it's just not where I thought it would be. Uh, I think the Z06 is is the right move. And whoever paid markup on a normal Stingray, whether it's a 1LT, 2LT, or 3LT, uh, if you paid over 100 grand for that car, I feel like you got a bad deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm i not so much on the same boat because when I see a Stingray on the road, you know, there's some angles that it doesn't work for me. Um, I don't think it's the prettiest car. But I respect it because, you know, it is a experimental of the entire Corvette name, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Corvette's always been front engine, rear drive. I mean, you know, if you really think back, Corvette was never really a sports car. And now it's a supercar, right? So, like, yeah. you know, it definitely has changed throughout the years. I like the C8, but I don't know. There, there's just something about it that I still don't put it the same tier as like Ferrari, you it's, know? It's, yeah. It's like not perf as exotic. Yeah, performance-wise, like, I mean, they could be the same. I mean, the we've seen a lot of C8 videos that, you know, it can trash Ferraris. It's McLaren fast. But there's still something about it that, you know, a McLaren, yeah. even a 570S can be there. And a C8, I won't even look at the C8. I'll just dive towards that McLaren. Yeah, and I think, well, and that's where the Z06 kind of, it gives it that exotic soundtrack mm -hmm. and just the better look. Because I just, I think the C8R, there's no bad angles. Mm. But the C8, uh, the Stingray, there's some some angles that just looks awkward. The stock wheels are ugly as sin. Mm. The little five, the flat five spoke, because it's not wide enough, they couldn't give it even a slight bit of concave to them. Uh, and so the wheels are ugly as heck, um, but the C8R, I think it just it's just perfect. Um, and I do see it as a legitimate supercar in, you know, that that's gonna be a lot less to maintain than, <laughs> yeah, than anything for, for sure. a lot more reliable than any Ferrari or McLaren. Um, 
so yeah, I, I I'm excited for the Z06. I think I've been waiting for the Z06. I would not even consider getting like you knew that it's coming since yeah. day one. Oh sure. And we know there's 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 gonna be a ZR1. ZR1. The ZR1 is gonna be crazy. Yeah. The Z06 <laughs> is gonna be the sweet spot where you're getting that NA power. Well, the last one was not NA, but you're getting that NA just a really exotic and very special engine. <laughs> um and just visually, even if you don't care about the performance, visually, the Z06 always looks so much better. Do you think your family would get one? Uh, possibly. Right? Possibly, yeah. Because you guys had a Camaro and then you went to Corvette. Or was it yeah. the other way around? Yeah, yeah. We went from Camaro to the, 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 the C7. Uh, C7 Grand Sport, which is the Z06 look without the Z06 engine. Right. Uh, so 450 versus 650 horsepower. 470, I guess, is, is the real number. It feels fast for 470. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, the Z06, it, it, they're going to tune it to actually be able to put the power down. Even the last one was 650 horsepower. That was actually a surprisingly drivable car. <laughs> um, I was pretty impressed driving the Z06 around the track. Uh, and I somehow it felt more controllable than the Grand Sport, which makes no sense because mm. it's the same suspension that they put in both cars. Interesting. Um, yeah, this one, this one is exciting though, yeah. to me at least. We'll we'll wait until fall of uh, 2021 until they release a little bit more information on it. Mm. But until then, we'll just have to be, you know, just hoping Keep and dreaming. speculating. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be twin turbo. No, four turbos. It's going to be a four-cylinder instead. Thousand horsepower (laughs) per liter. (laughs) All right, let's move on to the final uh, little review that we have here. Um, So just this past Monday, released the 2021 Mercedes AMG E63S wagon review. This this wagon was quite special to me, um, but... I don't think it filled that wagon void for me. So let, let me explain. I, I love wagons, always have, because I just love the way that they look. Um, they, they just, you know, they just look amazing to me. Uh, E63, the older ones, like the naturally aspirated V8, just made a, an amazing sound. This, of course, is a four liter twin turbo V8 now. So it's a little bit different, still makes good sounds and makes a whole whack ton of power, 603 horsepower. But it wasn't as impressive as I thought it would be. It didn't leave an impression that it's an amazing vehicle for me anyways. So I, it, the E-Class, it's just not as big as I thought it would be. So... Mm. Um, I put my child in here in just a regular infant seat. He was fine. Uh, but if I put in the convertible seat, which is quite a bit bulkier and larger, he wouldn't, f- like the seat wouldn't fit without the front seat moving so far forward that I can't sit in there. Like I'm five foot 11. I couldn't fit in front of a convertible. And that's a problem. Like when a wagon like this is really designed for a family and it can't really fit a family mm-hmm. there's a problem there yeah and there's no rear jump seat like the old e-class not <laughs> on the e63 you can get it on like the other e-models but not on the 63 yeah like it i i spoke with uh, a friend of mine his name is dean he owns um axon which is uh, a simulator and he actually goes like racing on his cars and he has a, a older variant of the E63. We went for a little bit of a drive because I wanted to, you know, get his take on the vehicle, uh, what he felt and whatnot. Uh, he thought the engine, while it was powerful, it didn't have the soul of the older one. It wasn't as immediate. The, interior he thought it was quite busy comparing to his because you know there's a bunch of screens and there's a lot that you can do his is just a lot more simpler um his is i think is like 10 years old or so now like 2011 2012 i think yeah um but other than that like you know in terms of seating capacity and 
like how it feels inside is very very similar um and yeah like he actually really enjoyed the the ride of this uh even in full comfort mode it was like super compliant uh but when you turn it up to the sport or sport plus it does firm it up enough where even in a corner lean and sway was quite reduced so he was mm. quite impressed by that but yeah i just i just wished it was a little bit more not in terms of performance did this one uh seat do the seats do the thing where it her turns mid corner like oh, it, the bolstering no, the the bolstering yeah it hugs you in mid corner yeah yeah when it when you turn the steering wheel the bolsters they're active bolsters so they actually like push you against the other side so if it's a right t- uh, turn the left bolster inflates to really push you into the seat itself yeah i thought i think that i remember that driving this generation e63 before and i thought it was so weird because the the thing is it does it in parking lot speeds oh yeah <laughs> at, at all speeds yeah it makes no sense it's like dude i'm just trying to like parallel park at at three kilometers an hour i don't need this <laughs> bolster jabbing into my 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 abdomen and um but i will say this new nine speed transmission mm. i drove it on the highway and i was so impressed because i was in ninth gear or eighth gear and i just stepped on it slightly and it jumped down to fourth so quickly and then it just started ripping I, I tried that in the new C63, and I was really impressed by this transmission because uh, the the previous generation, the seven speed, uh, kind of a clumsy transmission. Mm-hmm. This one felt like this one felt like it was uh, yeah real. real good. Dean Dean also mentioned that uh, he really liked the transmission because it's not only smooth to downshift; it was smooth in city, which mm-hmm. most dual clutches just don't do well at because they always you know do a little bit of that lag and they always roll a little bit with this it didn't so like the transmission is really well done the calibration on it but yeah it i mean i, I still absolutely love the car would i buy one probably not even if i had the money i think i would step down to the e53 um i think that's enough of a vehicle without going something like this that's i just don't think i'll ever use that kind of power um for what this vehicle is designed for it's designed to be on the street like mm. you know let's be honest i don't really think anyone's taking this to a track how, t- how different mechanically is the 63 and the 53 aside from the engine obviously i don't I know exactly i can't um, imagine them being that like chassis wise being that different I would assume chassis would be the same. Uh, the only real difference is the suspension itself. The 53 would weigh less, six cylinder versus mm. eight. Um, so I would assume it weighs a little bit less. So maybe some difference in suspension, but mm. hard to say. Yeah. But yeah, 600 horsepower in a wagon just is not, I don't, yeah, I can't see myself ever using that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Leaving cars and coffee, um, it's like the one place you would use a 600 horsepower. Oh, and the, absolutely. And launch control, of course, you have to. Um, leaving Starbucks, it's a, another place that you can use launch co- control and 600 horsepower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's like this car is not something I would be even remotely interested in tracking. Um, so we just went up to Area 27 last weekend. One of my dad's friends brought his uh, RS6. And man, that thing, as cool as that car is, it just does not belong on a track. No. It's got the carbon ceramic brakes. It's got, it's got the whole package, right? Yeah. But once you, you can't get over the weight and the size of the vehicle. Um, that is ultimately what makes it not enjoyable to drive uh, at that limit. So it's too fast for the city because it's just got too much power and it doesn't it doesn't hold its own on a track because you can maybe get a few laps before the tires just give up because yeah. the thing weighs completely this much. disintegrate <laughs> yeah to stop go and turn with something that weighs this much is just not going to work out um so that's kind of 
always been the Dean has been really competitive in his E63 at autocross, mm. but that's autocross. It's it's a one minute stint. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not something you really want to repeatedly lap, and just the wear and tear is not worthwhile. And I see people putting the carbon ceramic options on the previous generation of this this wagon, and I'm like, why? Because those carbon ceramic brakes, they're they they're very touchy. The the modulation is terrible, and uh, they get quite loud if you don't like clean them out. You have to clean the the holes in the, the mm. rotors and stuff. Uh, somehow they they get quite quite loud and they're yeah they're too grabby. I I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I I just don't understand. Like, what's the MSRP on this? Like, oh, let's... way too much. Um, <laughs> base price is one hundred and twenty eight thousand. S test is hundred and forty. That is uh, that's kind of where you, I figured it would be. If you add carbon ceramics and some other stuff, it's one hundred and sixty six. You don't need the carbon ceramic. It doesn't. Okay, so visually speaking, I like the interior of the RS six more and the exterior. I so I like the exterior of this more because it's more subtle. Ah. <sighs> If I want subtle, I get the 53, though. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when you buy a 53, it's just like saying you couldn't afford the 63. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, th that's the only reason why you're buying 53. But I just... It's, I, I love this car. Don't get me wrong. I don't want anyone to hate me for saying this. But it doesn't make sense. I don't know why they make it or who they make it for. Like if it's, if they just stop that's... making this, will someone like actually like lose their crap? Like yeah, like I, I don't think anyone no. would care if if they just <laughs> you know as much as okay. So every journalist has to go. Okay, well they don't make any cool wagons anymore. Like who is this really for? No, I I I just want the regular e wagon. I want the e four hundred. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Not the E400 that they make now because they, they lifted and put body cladding on it. I wanted the regular E400 because that's what I was interested in. Or a C43. I love the C43. I don't need a car with 600 horsepower. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it doesn't make sense. I'm happy around 300. 300 yeah. to 400. It's a really good sweet spot to be a really good performance car on the street. Like anything above 200 to 300, it's more than acceptable. Let's be honest. You don't need a vehicle with more than that yeah. on the street. Yeah, I want you know, like if you're getting a C eight Z O six, then yes, you need you need the six hundred horsepower because it just justifies its existence. Yeah. But something like this, it just doesn't need it, and you just it's not enjoyable to me to even have that much power. So I actually went to Cars and Coffee, or not? I went to a McLaren event with this e63 uh only three people came up to me and was like hey is that an e63 most people just looked at it and just like walked past i mean mm -hmm. there was mclarens and lamborghinis around so you know makes sense but this is a brand new e63 they're, they're really rare and no one batted an eye so there's also that as maybe a problem depending on you know how you think about it because mm -hmm. when you're spending 140k you probably want to have a little bit of attention. At yeah. least that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it, driving it, it doesn't necessarily feel 30 grand more special than a 53. No, it doesn't. That's the thing. It doesn't feel like f probably like 50 or 60 grand more special than an E400. You know, driving around every day, it doesn't feel any more special than a standard E-Class. Mm -hmm. so, so that's it. That's it for this week. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for uh, for watching and tuning in this week. Um, yeah. And we'll catch you next week for whatever automotive news that uh, that's available.